here we are at the Edinburgh Fringe. Yes. Are you very now? You're you're a first timer. For, uh, first first yeah. year up doing uh, an hour. Yeah, very excited. And Welsh. And Welsh. And now you just before we go any further because. Uh, Everything I was reading about all three of you, I kind of know a lot about Glenn, I know a lot about uh, John, but I noticed uh, your show's called By and Large. Yes. You do know that's an Edna Everidge joke, no? No, I didn't. Ah! Wicked. But, oh, great minds, though. Absolutely, oh, totally. No, it was, um, <laughs> she used to say, uh, you know, her, it was her daughter or whatever it was who was. Uh, She's a lovely girl, by and large, and she was both by and large. So right. I just wondered if the, the title was a bit of an homage. No, it was a steal. Um, oh, OK. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a bad, bad it's okay. Excellent. I, 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 also got, I also got from Dame Edna, will he still need me, will he still feed me, Glenn, I'm 60 more, so like, we, it's exactly Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I ha I, I, because I know the title of the show, mm. I know what you said there, but you pretty much ran that all into one single word. Yeah, it's the only way I can say it. It's such a cumbersome title that it's actually, it's pain, I find it painful to say. And I don't, I don't regret calling it that, but it's, it, I think it's the longest show title at The Fringe this year. Um, and as a result, because the fringe brochure, you've got a, you, you only get a limited number of words. Oh, no, as a result, it eats into the blurb. So the blurb just says like Glenn's new show. That's like, <laughs> what? That's all it says. I didn't have any space for like any information or anything like that. Uh, yeah. And sorry, to just slow it down, you've got to get your money's worth out of these words. Yeah. So the show is, this is Glenn Moore. Yes, and it, the show is called Will You Still Need Me? Will You Still Feed Me? Glenn, I'm 60 more. Was that better? <laughs> Will you yeah. still need me? Yeah. Will you still feed me? Yes. Glenn, I'm 60 more. Yeah. I mean, if people know the Beatles song already, Absolutely. then it makes yeah. sense. If they don't, then what a, what a confusing title. Well, exactly. They're <laughs> just going to yeah. you. You've, you've always gone. I think the first time I went to see your show, it was because it was just such a brilliant title, and you thought, this is really funny. Anyone that comes up with a title like that is uh, bound to be a brilliant comic. Imagine my disappointment. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I was so scared for it. I was really scared. <laughs> no, but um, is, it a, is it a cunning ploy or are you just fond of... No, I just thought it was like an extra opportunity to just put a joke in it. So because the, the city is so... I mean, we, a lot of us arrived yesterday and the city is so awash with just billions of posters but it is difficult to sort of stand yeah. out with just an image sort of of yourself. And it's one thing to sort of do something really interesting visually of yourself, but I've got a very boring face and demeanor. So <laughs> not, I'm, we're working with a very limited range here. So what all I could really do was try and do something with the title. But as we discovered just almost immediately before the uh, camera started rolling, mm. You have a tiny forehead. Yeah, uh, basically, now, there, there yeah. has to be. And we covered that before you said hello. That was the first <laughs> yeah. thing you said is, where does your hairline begin? Awesome. <laughs> and yes. it starts here. Yes. No, I don't think it's a tiny forehead. It's just smaller than you'd expect. <laughs> well, compared to, the rest of, <laughs> compared to the rest of your face. That's a whole day, Morgan. All right? I, I, <laughs> uh, there's, uh, well, yes, I always thought you just had the world's most massive comb over. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought that's strange, to pull you know, he's, yeah, 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 okay. he's very young, yeah. but I'll, I'll maybe not mention it because he'd be upset. And then I thought, what the hell? Hello. Yeah, uh, we'll do it in front of a camera. <laughs> yeah. That's more polite. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, by and large, we've established is uh, just thoughtlessly ripped off of the great uh, Dame Edna. <laughs> yeah. uh, are you crapping yourself are you doing your first hour? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm right, right, uh, f full of a nappy right at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's nerve wracking. It's, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, I am, it, I'm excited, but I'm, you know, the nerves are, you know, a sign of non-complacency, fingers crossed. It, yeah, you know, yeah, which, I mean, I did, couldn't help but notice we were, we're really looking, um, you three, that people who are, of course, you ruined the whole thing. I've just reread your press release, and I don't know why you're here, quite frankly. <laughs> but um, people who are uh, that much derided, think just funny. I don't know why I did that. I'd like to apologise. <laughs> For the year. <laughs> yeah, that, that was last year. Yeah, I thought the quote show was really good. I'm just going to, just going to sit on my hands. Sorry about the quotes. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get to you in a minute. Um, uh, but, but just funny, you know, funny for funny's sake. However, a brief troll through your press release. 
I mean, you are just mired in a morass of uh, family weirdness and God knows all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, just for people, I don't know. So, so I talk about my family a lot. The show is about me coming out, but I just just have a bit of a mental family. It's a show about <laughs> growing up with a feeling of otherness. So yeah, like my auntie is a ghost hunter. My nan is what? a yeah. <laughs> so your auntie's a ghost. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, don't ruin the ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Good Spoiler out. alert. <laughs> 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 no, so my auntie's a ghost hunter, my nan's a Thai bride, she's only 10 years older than me. Um, just, you know, I'm glad you said the end of that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just, just loads of other like peculiar things as well. My, like, growing up, my mum had a thing for toy boys, so I used to like, yeah, talk all about it but and it, stuff. But it's, um, uh, what, you, you're not... You're not going down the dead dad route. I'm not suggesting no. of the, you know, the, the terrible tragedy. We're not going to reveal that you and your nan are going to run away together in some hideous <laughs> family <laughs> <That's splitting>. my <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a, yeah, don't get me wrong, it's a coming out story, but it's a vehicle just to talk about my family and to celebrate them. It's, uh, I just want, it's just, they're just really funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to talk they, about. Are they coming up? for saying, but, um, uh, you know, people go, yes, I've just come out. You go, you know, you've, you've, you, you're not giving off the macho man vibe. <laughs> so, I mean, no. is it... <laughs> um, it's not what you've got, it's what you do with them. Um, uh, th were they surprised when you came out? Oh, yeah, they were. Yeah, uh, maybe. Really? Yeah, yeah, big time. I was, I was dating a woman. Uh, <laughs> was, she was, was she surprised? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah she, she was surprised. <laughs> I, uh, we don't go out anymore. She's a, she's a born again Christian. But again. Oh, dear. Oh, hell. Oh, that's <laughs> no good. <laughs> well, okay, well, that, that's killed the, killed the mood completely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're still, you're still, you're still <laughs> friends. Uh, but uh, moving swiftly on to, now, do you, would you rather be called Obi or John? Well, Obi, most people call me Obi. Oh. There's a lot of uh, people over the years um, didn't know who John O'Brien was doing the comedy. A lot of people still don't. Uh, exactly, so uh, one of my best mates, Dan Willis, during the, the festival, I knew him for years as Obi. And then when Facebook came in, I didn't know like, who the hell is this John O'Brien guy? Yep. You know, so, uh, so Obi's, Obi's fine. Obi's good. Right? It's, like, it's like his pronoun. Yep. Um, <laughs> now, have you, uh, have you seen... No, we've never, we've never gigged no, together or anything no. like that. Oh. First time we met downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just here, he just came out to me there. So. <laughs> <laughs> respect, man, right. respect. Do you, want to, uh, do you want to change places? He's not making you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. No. <laughs> um, if you feel his hand creeping. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't seen loads and loads of your shows. I've seen you gigging and the, the hour-long show. And what is, what is a joy for a jaded old reviewer and comedy commentator like me is, you know, you, you go, oh, what's the show about? And you go, well, it's not really about anything. It's just funny and lovely and oh, entertaining. Yeah. And the hour rolls by and there's, um, there's enough banter with the audience to, to keep it personal, oh, but not so much that you start oh, to think, why couldn't you have just written a fucking show, oh, Sunshine, oh, you know? Oh, um, and it, but that is a, that kind of comedy has to be something you're born with. Because there's no technique, if you know what I mean, it, or if there is a technique, it's the cleverest thing I've ever seen, <laughs> because it looks nice. Like though, I think, because a, a lot of it's going to, I've got middle, sorry, some middle start end, I've got a big start, right, so start middle end. <laughs> it's, but, it's a cunning ploy. But, it's kind of that, but I, if I get distracted, I can go, I go off on a tangent somewhere else, and so there's a lot of stuff going on, but I, I kind of know where I'm ending, but I don't always end there, so it's... So, 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 so you know where you start. Aye, so, so and you've got I always a vague think, idea where you're going. Aye, and sometimes I don't. I go somewhere else, and so so the same audience if they came on like a separate night would get the same beginning. Yeah, but could just get a aye, different. Aye, aye, aye. Oh wow. So, 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 so last year, last year was fun. You know, cause, you because know, these guys never come up last year because they didn't know what it was going to be like. You kind of mm, thought, no. and now we be a exactly. Now you're yeah. like the aye. best month ever. So, aye, so it was, it was it good because. There was less, because you probably would never have seen me if, you, if it wasn't for last year. Cause That's possible. Possible, because there was less, yep. you know. Um, 
So I forgot, I heckled myself there. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll kind of, I, I write, see, as in writing and stuff, a lot of the stuff I write is on stage. So I have like a half-baked idea and I kind of a, because I find it hard to be funny when I'm writing it down. So it's like I kind of sit and the creativity's not there. So I kind of have an idea and it kind of comes out on stage. Like taking a line for a walk. So you take Basically, so I've got like a premise or an idea and I go, right, OK. And it might end up being something different. So it's the throwaways from that idea that ends up being the funny bit. So it's... But you, you have to be a funny person to be able to do that. Aye. So you I know think what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of it was when I, when I started doing comedy, I was quite lazy with writing, so I had to get good at that, I think, as right. well. So <laughs> part of it was getting good at improvising and stuff, so I think that, that kind of was part of but it. it. It's um, one of the other... See, I haven't seen you no. yet. Oh. Uh, but the other, <laughs> the other thing that really helps, and it is... And again, uh, you can't really fake it. It's just to be likeable, yeah. to be somebody that walks on stage and the audience go, oh, all right, yeah, cool, that's how I'm liking this. And you have that, and you have that. So one of the things I learned... We'll see. <laughs> so one of the things I learned uh, early on was um, your attitude to the audience is important, because I, I see it... I, I genuinely see it as being in a pub with my, my mates. Yeah, so yeah. The, 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 and like indeed my on pals. the free fringe, you are in a pub. Aye, yeah. you know, but it's like that. Yes. And, uh, and, and I see, I've seen comedians over the years kind of, they, they think, that they somehow think they've got a higher status. And that works depending on the character, but sometimes they think they're too good for the audience. I've seen that happen. Yeah, yeah. And people go into pretentious dick, mm. you know, that kind of thing. Mm. But I'm just kind of there, I, you know. Just... You were always very, just, I remember the very first time I saw you, it was probably your first show, but you just go, aww. I, I used to get this. Come and see this guy. <laughs> Anyone in their 50s or 60s, usually, Aye. would warm to me more than younger audiences or audiences older, because I think they'd go, oh, that's my son. Yeah. <laughs> but then that doesn't mean they then, like, enjoy your material. They would just sat there after every punchline going, Oh, yeah. And that was actually led to some really difficult shows. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes yeah. that I know is better than silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> some shows you'd rather have a groan than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and did, so the, 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 the fabulous title thing, did you find it now? Oh shit! I've got to find got to find a punny title for my Edinburgh show. Yeah, the pressure's really on. In yeah. fact, I was, I've, it's been really handy actually having uh, the last couple of years away yeah. from the fringe because that's given an opportunity to spend a bit more You've time. You've created a couple created, of years. And also creating a bit of a backlog of the next couple of years uh, that, that, uh, that they'd hopefully be sorted as well. Um, but also, I've had other comedians suggest titles as uh, well, which is nice. So Adam K. Uh, the guy wrote, uh, this is going to hurt. He yep. suggested, um, uh, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a more, eh? uh, Which oh, I'm, I'm happy with that. Anna, Anna, Anya Magliano, who's debuting this year, has yep. uh, please said, Glenn, I have some more. Which um, <laughs> I really want to buy off her uh, for future That's yeah. clever. Really nice. That's clever. I suppose the real danger will come if one of them takes that title and then develops a show from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever want to to do, you know, do a message show or do a, what the audience will take away from this, yes. you know. No, never. It was always just a vehicle of like, right, I'll write as many jokes as I can first, make sure I've got in the region of say 300 jokes or so, <gasps> and then go, right, what, what topics do these tend to be about? So all these t all could be about this particular job. All these jokes are about hating someone, so that's the enemy of the show, that sort of thing, and you yeah. take those and then you sort of try and weave them in together. And so it can, the, the show then changes a lot over the year and the show will, in March, the show will be set in a supermarket. By May, it's set in a leisure centre, that sort yeah. of thing, because it keeps changing. Because it's, again, you, you, you don't think of, of you, I don't think of you as a one-liner comic, but you, you no. are very gag heavy. Yeah, nor would I really want to be seen. I've never just stood on stage and just 20, done 20 minutes of like, oh, these are all just, yeah. I've always liked to try and connect them more because if there is an audience who aren't into one-liners or aren't yep. into jokes, right. at least they're still getting a coherent story. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I tried to sort of make it. And um, it, make, it makes it tricky to string together because some jokes you go, right, this joke isn't credible enough. It's, it's too unrealistic to fit into a story. So that joke can't. Uh -huh. be in the set yep. and that's really like some of the stuff that I'm most happy with will never be in a show because it's too outlandish uh, yes, to really fit yes. so that's the only that's the only down you could do a bit at the end like like uh, some movies used to do outtakes uh, yeah absolutely. you could just say here's here's some of my favorite jokes yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, you can buy that idea of me later <laughs> thanks uh, now Tom. what with the ghost hunting Auntie and yeah. the twelve-year-old Nan and the coming out and the everything else yeah. and the Holy Ghost um, hunting ex-girlfriend. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, 
is, are you, is, do you see yourself as a gag merchant or do you see yourself as a storyteller? Gag. I started off as a one-liner comic and then I do a lot of sort of like panel writing as well. So I do, I, I'm used to just writing uh, one-liners. What? So you write for other people? Yeah. <gasps> and then it, it's <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that, is that not... He writes for you. <laughs> ah. Brilliant. Really great. Oh, okay. sorry. Right. It's lovely to work with. <laughs> we can probably cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> no, we won't. Please, no one can know. No one can know. I'm glad you like my show title. Yeah. <laughs> It <laughs> is on me as well. So. Yeah. He wrote this. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a character. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is all well here. And, and I'm uh, by and small. Mm -hmm. um, uh, true. Oh my God! I just came out to you guys. Oh. Uh, is that not crippling for a comic to 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 sit and hear other comedians getting huge laughs with your funny? Uh, no, because you can write jokes. Just write another one. I, I, I used to do the same. I used to write jokes for other comics. I loved it. It was yeah, great. Really? You got real sense of satisfaction when it got read out, and you go, "Great!" And then you think, yeah. oh, "I'll just write, I'll write some more stuff." Yeah, write a lot of jokes. Then you got to daily. Yeah, well, as you know, when it's like not the week, when you get twenty-four hours, but you write over a hundred jokes and, and stuff. And you're like, yeah, and I, I, I co-write uh, Uncle Roger, that YouTube thing for Nigel Lung. So I write all the one-liners for that. And again, it's just writing in other people's voices. Oh, so it's, it's just, a, it sounds awful. It's a job. It's and a, no, 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 it sounds, it's, it's, it's a great a exercise. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Hi. So then when Hi. you go to you, you go, I'm warmed up. This is great. Yes. So it has taken, uh, like, Reese James is helping direct my show. Cause I've, I don't, I've never done hours before and I don't think big. <laughs> that, that sounds awful. I love it. That was so bad. <laughs> Hardly can't See, be told, I think. It's that for an hour. Uh, <laughs> there's something I want to do. Like, I've been speaking to somebody about writing stuff for um, ideas for uh, one of the BBC places, and it's like one liners, and I don't do a lot of that. But mm. I think for me, it'd be a good exercise just to get in more yeah, of the habit yeah. of doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. just I, just, I, I, I would have thought that the, the, the comics ego, performing ego, would, it would be, you'd be crying hot uh, salt tears yeah. of rage. It's worse when the joke you wrote doesn't get in. That's ah, what's right. worse. Uh, that, it then recalibrates what you like and don't like. Because uh, <laughs> that's worse, but you send a joke in that you really, really like. Just it playing the delivery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're in my joke. <laughs> but, uh, so you, oh, with the, so your, your show's like massively packed with, um, with crazy characters, yeah. um, uh. at life-changing events, and gags. Yeah, that's the idea. And, it, and it's been, so it's just been one line of stitching it all together. Sometimes, sometimes Glenn was saying, turn right. it into a story. Yeah, it, but then it, I, I'm trying to learn to pace it a bit better. Right. Because at the moment it was just ba 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 And everyone's going, I have to be here for an hour, could we not? Uh, <laughs> 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 so it's been quite fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a learning experience, but it's going to show. It's You're a on a learning curve. Yeah, I'm enjoying my curve. Always my learning curve. And do you. Is there the same, I suppose, for, for any of you, because you gig, and that's going to be like a, you know, a 10 or 20 minute slot. Mm. Yep. Is it more or less uh, enjoyable and fulfilling to do an hour, or is there an element of, <sighs> like that, I'm, I'm going to be here for an hour, I've got to pace myself? Or is it, great, now I've got an hour. I, I prefer an hour. Yes, yeah, same. Really? I guess, we are now, um, well, we're doing a 20, you're kind of a, not stifled, I, I enjoy a 20 because it's kind of quick, but you're always doing it for a promoter or a comedy uh -huh. club and they're kind of, they're not, they're not, there's no rules, but you're kind of a, you don't want to go off in tangents as much because right. you're kind of a, you want to do a good yeah. job for them. Whereas at an hour, it's my, my hour. So I, I've got more freedom with an hour. Interesting. So I've got more freedom to chat to the audience and go where I want with it. I think, yeah, with an hour as well, you can, it can crescendo more. You can link more stuff back to stuff you said earlier uh, on. It's just more of a, whole, it's just more of a satisfying experience. Uh, and, and you, as a newbie at the yeah. hour, have you enjoyed, you know, I know you said you're, you have to pace yourself, but do you feel like it's going to be more full, full filling? What am I talking about? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and more fun, more... To, to stretch your comedy legs in the hour? I think so. I feel yeah. a bit unqualified to say just yet. I'm asking again at the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I might well do that. Because at the moment, I, I, I adore doing 20s yeah. and I MC a lot, but that's just where I am on my comedy uh, sort of journey at the moment. So yeah. I'm doing like 
and I'm very fortunate to be like in, in all the clubs and like doing that. So I'm really enjoying that. But it's a different beast. I know when I was a different beast. How fabulous! So yes. Now you get to plug your show, because that's basically why you're here. All this course, chat's yeah, all yeah. very well. Uh, so it's on every day at the Fringe. It's called Will You Still Need Me? Will You Still Feed Me? Glenn, I'm 60 more. That's Will You Still Need Me? <laughs> Will You Still Feed Me? Glenn, I'm 60 more. And it's on at the Cabaret Bar in Pleasant's Courtyard every day at 4 oh, o'clock. I love the Cabaret that's Bar. so nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, I am also every day at the Pleasant's Courtyard, Bunker 1. That's Ten past six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, something, good something, start, something start six. Uh, uh, my show's Morganies by and large, yeah. Just fun show. <laughs> fun show, that sounds good. And hey, I'm, doing, I'm doing three. Three oh, days. Too, too many. Oh, no. Too many, man. No. Not, yes. I mean, he doesn't look like an overachiever, does he? <laughs> no, thanks, thanks. <laughs> This is a persona. All right. So the, the first one, ten past one in the Banshee Labyrinth. It's called Obi the um, the Power of Imagination. Ooh. So we'll do something a wee bit different there. Mm. And then a compilation show at seven forty-five. Whistle Binkies, Jocks, Jordies and Aussies. So two of my good best mates, Dan Willis and Mick Nevin, doing it together. Excellent. Plus guests. And then the fuck it list is at nine thirty-five, and the Doghouse Hotel. Where's the dog house hotel? I've not seen it. I don't know yet. I've not, it's, it's a new <laughs> venue. It's, on, it's, on, it's I'm sh somewhere on the uh, Cannons Gate kind of area. So I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll go for a wander now. Yeah, well, I think that'd be a very aye, good idea. Aye. You could be late so for the show. The other two venues, I know where they are. So yep. It's not far. It's only like a five minute walk from Whistle Binkies, so it's not far. Cool. Excellent. Uh, I want to see all these shows. Uh, cool. I definitely yeah. want to see all these shows. And, and I can okay. see these too. I usually clash with loads of shows, but I can actually see these guys. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's a lot okay. of exchanging phone yeah, numbers. Yeah, there we go, yeah. <laughs> we sold a couple of tickets already. This is good. 